the uh, wonderful trailer tying and heard the bell ringing and she was finishing up. Uh, it's a wonderful Sunday to be together in the house of the Lord. Uh, a lot of us are remembering the uh, busy week we had this week with our vacation Bible school and in front of the entire congregation. I'd like to thank Tammy and her husband for all the work that they did to bring us back. Tells us that next week we'll have some slides uh, of things that happened, uh, various activities and things like that at the Bible school, and that'll fit in well with our uh, Hawaiian shirt uh, day that the pastor has planned for next Sunday. Uh, I'd like to uh, welcome our special music group today, Harmonia. Uh, Robin Rouse and I will go back a ways. You know, people say that uh, people have a defined moment in their life. So when I was involved in Pacific Theater, and I remember from Miracle on 34th Street, she was delivering one of her lines, and all of a sudden the entire set started to fall on her. Now, if you think about it, uh, stage sets really aren't that heavy, so she just reached up and grabbed it, pushed it back into place, and continued on with her lines, and then took it out. So, it's uh, just one of those moments that's sealed on my mind. Um, Beth uh, Tuchinardi, Andrew, do I remember you as Charlie Brown in a uh, Renaissance singers program, okay? And then John Hink. So we're uh, delighted to have the four of you here. And okay, I'm just barred out. So good also to have you here. Um, I'd like to uh, welcome a special guest that's with us today. We're to be Shirley Daly. She was my neighbor here on Church Street all the way back in 1970. And uh, taught in Huntington School for many years. When I started teaching at Huntington School, she was still a legend at home ec teacher that uh, did that for. Shirley, it's great to have you here. Are there any other guests that we need to introduce this morning? Okay. Uh, I want to highlight that on the 27th, so this, this week, is the fish fry at um, Spring Bank Church, 5 o'clock. And then next week uh, is the uh, opinion of the Kings game. Now, I think the time for buying those things has already passed, but the pastor's pointed out anybody who wants to go, just show up, buy a ticket, and come in. And you'll see the uh, church group uh, out in... Uh, they can still get a hot dog and a beverage and come be with us. Okay. So, so if you make up your mind on Sunday, come! Right. Don't, don't feel that you're excluded because you didn't buy an advance tape. Okay. Uh, and let me ask if there are any other announcements that anybody would like to make. Okay, great then. Our uh, call works of our first hymn is 496 in the hymnal. We'll be working off of the hymnals today. We're singing all verses, and this is a well-known hymn, a sweet hour of prayer. And we do all three verses. So let's please stand with the same thing.
and she will give you her list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do have yeah, it might be best if we pass the list on to Lori so that she can get it on the on the internet and do that stuff that we did, that she does that I don't do. Okay. Joanne. Dick is supposed to get out of his uh, little visit with traditions Friday. Please pray for me that I can be able to take care of him. It's a little different now. Yeah, it'll be different. We're praying for you and for Dick. And let us know what we can do to help. Thank you. And we've been praying for you, Marilyn. We're glad to see you. And at Delberta, we were praying for you too, and still are. So I'm glad to see you. I give thanks for uh, all of your prayers. And uh, Ellen's doing better. She had a tooth extraction on Wednesday. And I hope you're not recording that. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Too late. <laughs> Ellen, don't listen. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> Betsy. Nancy. Nancy. I was right the first time. Well, when all three of you are together, I just have to start going down. I don't look like a Betsy. <laughs> anyway, um, a joy is that my friend's brother is in the state of Washington on his bicycle. Trip. He's gone clear out to Washington. He has to go clear to the coast. Then he takes Amtrak to Chicago, and then he's going to pedal from Chicago to Chillicothe. Wow. So he has almost made it to his destination. Uh, that's a joy. Um, prayers for my friend's stepdad, who's in the uh, he's in a, an acute care facility right now. Um, he's not showing a lot of improvement. So continued prayers for him. That should always be a part of our prayer life. All of those that are being taken care of uh, in physical therapy and in long-term care facilities, they need our prayer. Okay. Tuesday. Okay, we'll be praying for that. I had that and survived. You'll be fine.
or anything about God. So hopefully we touched their hearts and taught them something that yes. they can keep with them yes. for a long time. Yes. And any of you, it's, it, it dawned on me when I was working with the little ones myself, when, when our little ones don't have access to school, um, they, their development is kind of held back as far as reading and letters and numbers. And so if you have nieces or nephews, grandchildren, I, I prayerfully recommend that you get them on your knee away from the computer and, and, and start showing them, reading to them out of books and pointing to the words and pointing to letters so that they can enjoy uh, the learning experience. Uh, it, I didn't realize what a deficit was going on because of our COVID and the schools being shut down. Uh, so help your little ones in your family. Is there anybody else? Pastor, um, I just want to say I asked for prayers when we went to my husband's daughter's memorial. And um, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. There was peace. There was harmony. Nearly all of his children showed up but one. And uh, everyone who came to the memorial service were very, very loving and understanding. And I, I know prayer had the control over that situation. I'm so grateful. Then I would just like to ask for a prayer for uh, Brenda, who's having knee replacement surgery Friday, and dear friend Brenda, who um, discovered that she had a heart issue, had to have a pacemaker defibrillator placed in her body, and while they were doing that surgery, they discovered that her spleen was so large, it was the size of a six-month pregnancy. And so now she's taking chemo and the spleen is shrinking and that's all we know so far. Wow. Well we'll be praying for those special concerns too. And prayer for my husband Dick. He's done something to his back and his side and he's in a lot of pain. We've had tests and we'll find out what we're dealing with early this coming week. I also have uh, from Springbank Lois, Lori, Julie, and Beatrice on our list. Are we are we ready for a prayer? Nod your heads, yes. As I conclude the prayer, I'm going to ask a blessing over the offering, and so uh, will the, at the end of the prayer, ushers come up. Eternal and gracious Lord, you are here with us. Let your Holy Spirit minister to each of our hearts. Let us be the disciples that you called each of us to be. And Lord, we've lifted up the names of many. You've heard every name and you know their needs. I ask you, Lord, to intervene in a miraculous way to touch those and touch our lives. And we know that when we ask, it does make a difference. And we know that when we ask, we will receive an answer. Lord, forgive us when we're impatient. Lord, forgive us when we don't understand no. And forgive us when we are down in the dumps and forget to seek and forget to knock. And Lord, let us be a people of courage in the face of war in Ukraine, in the face of uh, elevated COVID uh, cases in our own neighborhood. Let us be courageous, let us be caring, and let us look after each other and our neighbors. In Jesus' name, we ask that this offering be anointed for your work here and now and throughout this neighborhood and the world. In the name of Jesus, 
Amen. Amen. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The followers of Jesus wanted Jesus to coach them or teach them how to pray. Now, Jesus gets right to the heart of the matter uh, and reminds them there in uh, Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. I think that's where we went, wasn't it? Yeah. So, now, they asked to be taught how to pray. We gather together, and I suspect that through the years and years of us gathering like this together, Sunday morning, year after year after year, that we have said the Lord's Prayer aloud hundreds, perhaps even a thousand times. And as we do that, we remind ourselves who God is. He's holy. And God is not only holy, but listening. God's listening. And when you ask, God hears. We struggle sometimes because God says no when we ask for certain things. And we know that when we sidestep God's purposes for our lives, that we become bashful about asking. Uh, it's kind of like when I've already ate half of the cherry pie in, in one setting, and later I say to Ellen, do you mind if I have another piece of pie? Uh, I, I could feel guilty about that, or I could wait until uh, she wasn't near and then go ahead and take all the pie that I wish, but that's not the way we're supposed to work with God. We communicate with each other, and we communicate with God. And so, uh, Jesus reminds the disciples, when you start your prayer, exalt God. We, we say, uh, in the Lord's Prayer, we say the first line is, uh, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That means holy. And what is holy? It's, it's purity. It's righteousness. It's love. And our God is that kind of God. And when we ask for God's kingdom to come, in this particular translation that I'm looking at, it says, uh, said, Jesus said, bring in your kingdom. God's kingdom is the transformation of this world for service, for compassion, for doing the right things. And the motives of our heart are also a part of that. Yeah. It says, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is that each of us know Him love Him, and obey Him. That's, that's what God wants from us. Is it simple and easy? At times, maybe, but at other times we have our own desires. We have our own agenda. We have our own self that we're protecting and we have to look after. And sometimes, we're only worried about ourselves. We're not worried about everybody else around us. We're not concerned about those that are hurting. Because 
we think we have enough problems of our own. It says, give us our bread we need for today. Do we seek more than what is needed for each day? Well, sometimes we might be greedy, and it, it does show. And as we move on, we say, forgive us of our sins. We ask God to forgive us because we know we've all sinned. And then we are compelled to forgive everyone else that's injured us. Oh, no. That's, that's a lot to ask, isn't it? You know, it can't be a lot to ask. Disciples, you think about it, they were with Jesus for about three years. I look around this room, and I know most of you have been going to church and being a part of Sunday school for more than three years. And I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand if you haven't, if you, if three years is about how long you've been going to church. I'm not going to ask anybody to raise their hand today. Not yet, anyway. Maybe later. We are a people that understand when we pray, we are asking for something. And we almost always receive some kind of answer. Now, we also ask not to be led into temptation. Uh, that means we have to use good judgment on our friends, the choices that we make at the grocery store. Uh, I'm guilty of making bad choices at the grocery store. Or when I go over to Old Home Flex, you know, Old Home Place is just two miles from my house. That's too close. Uh, yes, they have donuts back again, for those of you that were waiting. They're getting their plate, you know, they have donuts. They have blackberry cream cheese turnovers. Sorry, I probably shouldn't have told Claudia that. Now she's planning to run out there. Yeah, it happens. They have lovely lunch meat, which is full of salt and all kinds of things, and some sugar. Um, anyway, I want you to realize fully that the Lord's Prayer is a compacted version of what we do when we have our invocation here at church. The invocation, that's a fancy big word that says the opening, it's the opening prayer. It's the thank you to God for being here. That's it, what an invocation is. And we're also inviting our hearts to be open. I can guarantee you that long, long ago, I sat in the pews for years before I became a minister. And I know from my own experience, which I can form of confession, that there's times I sit in the pew and when the pastor was delivering a wonderful message, my mind was off somewhere else, like fishing, like thinking about motorcycles, going on a motorcycle ride, a run to the Dairy Queen. That was, that was my normal motorcycle ride in the ancient past when I had a motorcycle. Go to the Dairy Queen, get ice cream. Yes, it was tragic. And no, I didn't have a motorcycle wreck. I just I ate too much ice cream. <laughs> Jesus tells the uh, disciples a story about somebody wanting bread in the middle of the night. And I read that. I, every time I read that, I, 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 this is where I do need a, look, a raise of hand. How many of you keep three loaves of bread on hand at home? <laughs> Connie, Jane. Okay, so I know where I can go to get uh, bread in the middle of the night. Now, 
Uh, the brashness of asking. When we speak to God and talk to God, be confident. Yes, sometimes we pray and we have tears in our eyes because we're so sad about a situation. Well, uh, ask. You will receive an answer. Seek. And you will find. And knock. And the door will be open. When you knock, are you prepared for the door to be opened and for you to walk through the door? That's another whole question, isn't it? Am I able? Am I willing? Is my heart and mind focused on the things of God or am I focused on the things of people? It's easy to be distracted. I'm distracted a number of times a week. I can only speak for myself. You see, we all work with others. And if someone asks you for the example here is if your child asks for a fish, will you give him a snake? Now, when my kids were little, they wanted snakes. They, now, scorpions, we didn't know anything about scorpions, so we didn't ever have to deal with that one. But uh, if your child asks for an egg, of course, even the heathens and the unchurched, they wouldn't give their children a snake or a scorpion to play with. Because they love their children. That's why Jesus put it that way. When you ask God the Father Almighty to intervene in the health of a loved one, you know God is not going to send you a snake or a scorpion. God's going to send you strength and comfort and endurance. Because when you have someone that you love that's sick, those are the things that you really need. When I ask you, like I've asked a couple of Sundays in a row, the elevator's near completion. Wednesday of this week, the new safety brake will be installed. And I've asked you, pray for a miracle so that Tyler Memorial these facilities can be up to date and be safe and be comfortable. That's a part of my job. I've told you many times I have a job. Being a pastor is a job. I'm not perfect in every aspect of the job. Uh, please don't ask me to spell big hard words. I, don't, I, have, I have somebody help me with that called my computer in my pocket, the phone. I can, I can ask it for a spelling and it'll help me. The computer spell checks everything I type up. And long, long ago, when I needed secretaries, it took two secretaries to keep up with all my misspellings. You can laugh, but it's true. We that have a job to do Learn quickly how to adapt. I want all of you to learn to adapt as the disciples and followers of Jesus. Learn to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And I want you to think about prayer as a way of asking, seeking, and knocking. You have to do that. I compel you to pray. And of all life's treasures, learning to pray effectively, fervently, with passion is important. God listens to your prayers. And if you need 
If you have somebody drop in in the middle of the night, Jesus is reminding us that when you go to God, be like that person that went to his friend's house seeking bread. Keep seeking God and you will find God is near. Keep knocking and that door will be open and you will be compelled to go through it. And all three of those are about the love of God. Seeking, asking, and knocking. I ran across a little bit of a treasure of a prayer that comes from uh, a fellow, uh, Newell is his name, and he's the former uh, pastor that took care of a monastery mission church on an island called Iona. Raise your hand if you've heard of the island of Iona. Yay! You guys are you're Presbyterians and Scots, aren't you? Yeah. The Presbyterians and the Scots, uh, they know about Iona. It's a retreat where people focus on the spiritual. And just let your heart uh, melt with this prayer. It starts, In the name of God who creates all life, in the name of the Savior who loves life, and in the name of God's Spirit, who is the fire of life, trust Jesus is the light that shines, making the eternal mystery known in the darkness. And the darkness cannot overcome the truth of God's grace, fulfilled in the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for being here today. And thank you, Harmonia. We love you guys. Uh, get, get your calendar out. Get with uh, Connie and set up another visit. Our closing hymn is number 367, He Touched Me, the result of prayer. Uh, let's please uh, stand to sing. We'll do both verses.
and you knock. Amen.